A warm greeting. Today is Wednesday, June 26, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 4 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring a strong tropical wave that has a medium chance of cyclonic development as it moves westward. Eventually, it will reach the Caribbean Sea at the beginning of next week. It is important for residents of the Eastern Caribbean to stay alert to its evolution and forecast updates. This is particularly relevant for the Lesser Antilles Islands in the central and southern parts of the Arc of the Antilles. Additionally, we are monitoring another tropical wave currently located south of Jamaica, which will move towards the north of Honduras, where it might find marginally favorable conditions for the formation of a tropical depression. We will discuss this disturbance in another video that I will record later today. Let's focus on the strong tropical wave located southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. If we zoom in on the visible satellite image, we can see that this tropical wave is accompanied by good mid-level atmospheric rotation. In fact, the structure of this disturbance looks much more organized than we anticipated for today, which is why the chances of development continue to increase. Also, remember that a dense Saharan dust cloud persists over much of the tropical Atlantic, and we will be monitoring how this Saharan dust interacts with the circulation of the tropical wave, as it could be a limiting factor for long-term organization and strengthening when it approaches the Caribbean. The future of this tropical wave will depend on whether it can keep the Saharan dust away from its circulation. If it can, it might develop faster and potentially strengthen as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. At 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center increased the chances of a tropical depression developing in the tropical Atlantic to 40%. Just east of the Lesser Antilles and in the Eastern Caribbean Sea, it is very likely that this development probability will continue to increase over the next few days. Let's now look at the projections of the global models, starting with the American model, the GFS. In its latest run, the GFS shows a fairly rapid development. In fact, it develops a tropical depression between Thursday and Friday, indicating a significant change in the projections, as it now suggests that the system could organize more quickly than anticipated. Then, over the weekend, this disturbance could strengthen as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. It is projected that by Monday morning or afternoon, it could approach the southern islands of the Lesser Antilles. In the latest run, the GFS model shows a tropical storm passing through this region and then continuing on a westward trajectory. For now, it keeps it south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Additionally, the model continues to show the possibility of a second tropical wave that could also have cyclonic development chances by mid to late next week. It seems that the tropical Atlantic will remain active for at least the next 7 to 10 days. Here at Hurricane Info, I will be attentive to keep you informed. Let's look at other projections, such as the European model which also rapidly develops this tropical wave. In about 48 hours, it possibly shows a tropical depression forming in the Atlantic. Like the GFS model, it strengthens as it moves completely westward until, eventually, by Monday morning, it reaches the Lesser Antilles as a tropical storm. It then maintains this trajectory quite far south, passing well away from Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, remember that these projections can change over the next few days. We must remain vigilant in case there are any changes. Also, look at the second tropical wave. In this case, it does not develop it but keeps it quite strong, following a very similar trajectory and eventually passing through the southern Lesser Antilles. It definitely seems that the central and southern Lesser Antilles are currently at the greatest risk from this disturbance. Next, I will show you the total accumulated rainfall estimates projected for the coming days. The German model also aligns with this forecast. In this case, it shows a tropical depression or tropical storm approaching the southern Lesser Antilles by Monday morning. The UK model also shows the same scenario, with a tropical storm passing over the southern Lesser Antilles during the night of Sunday or early Monday morning. Judging by today's projections, I can tell you that the islands currently at the greatest risk are Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. Now, look at the projections from the members of the American model, where there is still considerable uncertainty about the future trajectory of this disturbance. Everything will depend on where a tropical depression forms and how strong it becomes as it reaches the Caribbean region. The slower and stronger it is, the more likely it will move towards the west-northwest. If it moves quickly or remains weak, it is more likely to move directly west and pass south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. As of this afternoon, the most probable scenario seems to be that it will maintain a westward trajectory over the Caribbean Sea. However, I repeat, we will continue to monitor possible changes in the projections. The members of the European model also agree with this scenario. There is also some uncertainty among the members. Those with a weaker and faster system move it completely west over the southern Lesser Antilles, while others with a slower and stronger system take a more west-northwest trajectory. Although less likely, it is a scenario we cannot rule out at the moment. So, what will influence the intensity forecast? I think the most important thing is to monitor whether the Saharan dust and dry air manage to enter the circulation of the future cyclone. For now, 
the models project that it could have a good moisture field that could keep the circulation protected from this dry air. However, the levels of Saharan dust and dry air are quite elevated in this area, which could result in significant intensity changes. Additionally, the models are projecting that it should be a fairly compact system, and these disturbances are subject to significant changes in intensity, whether rapid strengthening or weakening. This will definitely be one of the factors we will closely monitor in the coming days. In terms of wind shear, if it maintains a west-west-northwest trajectory over the eastern Caribbean Sea and Caribbean waters, it seems that the wind shear will be below normal, which could represent a significant threat in the western Caribbean in the long term, if this potential future cyclone reaches this area intact. However, this is something we will analyze later when we have better projections. Preliminarily, if we analyze the possible effects on the Lesser Antilles Islands, see that the GFS model projects that 100 to 150 millimeters of accumulated rainfall could fall in parts of Barbados, Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. The GFS model maintains a more southern trajectory. Meanwhile, the European model with a more northern trajectory leaves the maximum rainfall accumulations over St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, and St. Lucia, also with rainfall estimates between 100 and 150 millimeters. The rain could affect this region between Monday and Wednesday of next week. Well, that's all for the preview of what will soon be Invest 95. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info for more information. To do so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Go to the bottom of the video. Click the red subscribe button, and then click the bell to get notifications when I record new videos. Now, I say goodbye. I will return tonight with an update on the effects that Invest 94 will have as it approaches Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. See you later.